Hey there, I'm Alicia, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Laravel caching. Caching is essential for achieving high performance and scalability. Implementing the proper caching strategy right from the development phase is critical to avoid lagging APIs and sluggish page load times. Laravel is one of the most popular PHP frameworks, so implementing the optimal Laravel caching strategy is indispensable to a better user experience and greater business impact. In this video, we'll explore strategies for implementing and manipulating caching in Laravel. You'll learn about how Laravel caching works, several Laravel caching queries, and how you can handle caching on Laravel apps. Before we get too far, of course, I want to let you know that there will be a lot of commands and code to copy and paste. So we've included all of those resources in the video's description. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. OK, let's dive in. Laravel provides a robust and easy to use implementation of caching and different caching backends. With Laravel Cache, you can efficiently and effectively switch between many caching engines without writing any code. Laravel Cache also provides many practical methods that we can use to implement different caching strategies. Laravel Cache provides great caching backends and drivers. Depending on your use case, you can switch between them to enhance your application performance and load time. That said, Laravel caching also provides a seamless way to create a custom backend and use it with Laravel cache, but only if this following list does not fit your use case. The file driver is the default backend used by the Laravel cache when no driver is specified in the env file. The file backend is designed to store the cache data in an encrypted file found under storage framework. Laravel creates an encrypted file with the data and the cache key when new data is cached. The same happens when the user is trying to retrieve the content. Laravel cache searches through the folder for the specified key and, if found, returns the content. Though the file backend works flawlessly and saves time installing and configuring external drivers, it can also be perfect for development. It's faster than accessing the data from the database server directly. To use the file driver, add the following code to your env file. The array driver is a perfect caching backend for running automated tests and is configured easily with GitHub Actions, Jenkins, etc. The array backend stores the cache data in an array in PHP and does not require you to install or configure any drivers. It works perfectly for automated tests, and it's a bit faster than the file cache backend. To use the array driver, add the following code to your env file. When using the database driver, data is stored in memory for the current PHP process. Therefore, you need to create a database table to store the cached data. In addition, database caching improves scalability by distributing query workload from the back end to multiple front ends. You can run this artisan command to auto-generate the database schema needed by the database driver. The database driver is used mainly in situations where you can install any software on your hosting platform. For example, let's say you're using a free hosting plan with limited options. For that, we'd suggest sticking with the file driver because the database driver is, in most cases, the weakest point of your application. And trying to push more data into the bottleneck is not a good idea. To use the database driver, add the following code to your env file. The Redis driver uses the in-memory-based caching technology called Redis. Though it's swift compared to the other cache drivers discussed so far, it requires installing and configuring external technology. To use the Redis driver, add the following code to your env file. Memcached is known to be the most popular in-memory-based cache store. If you don't mind a bit of extra server maintenance, having to install and maintain additional services, the memory-based cache drivers memcached are great options. Using the memcached driver requires the memcached PECL package to be installed. To use the memcached driver, add the following code to your env file. 
The best caching driver to use and the performance of the cache driver depend on your project use case and the quantity of data to be retrieved. Laravel Cache provides many valuable methods used to implement many caching strategies. Storing new data in the cache is very simple using the different methods, each with several use cases. This method accepts three key parameters, duration and the data to be cached. This code will cache the post with the unique key for 20 seconds. This method stores an array of data in the cache at once with the same duration. It accepts two parameters, which are data and seconds. This method here is another excellent way to implement the cache aside strategy. The cache remember method accepts three parameters, a key, seconds, and closure used to retrieve data from the database if not found. Laravel cache also has the cache remember forever method, which does not accept the seconds parameter and stores the data forever. This method stores data in the cache server forever without specifying any duration. You can implement it with the following code. These methods retrieve data from the cache. Some of these methods can behave differently depending on if the data is found or not. This method retrieves data from the cache server with a specific key. You can retrieve an item by using this code. This method is used to retrieve an array of cached data at once using an array of the cached keys. You can retrieve an array of cache using the following code. You can also use this method to retrieve cache data by checking the cache server using the key provided. If the data is stored in the cache, it will retrieve it. Otherwise, it will retrieve the data from the database server and cache it. This method is the same as the cache remember forever method with just an extra seconds parameter in the cache remember method. These methods are used to remove items from the cache grouped by functionality. This method removes a single item from the cache with a specified key parameter. This method clears all the cache engines. It deletes all the items stored anywhere in the cache. You can adjust the values of an integer value stored in your cache by using the increment and decrement methods respectively. Laravel provides commands to make working with Laravel cache easy and fast. This command is used to clear the Laravel cache before it even expires using the terminal console. For example, you can run the following command. This command is used to clear the route cache of your Laravel application. For example, run the following command to clear your route cache. This command is used to clear the compiled view files of your Laravel application. You can achieve it with the following command. When using the database driver, you need to create a database schema called cache to store the cache data. You may also use the artisan command to generate a migration with the proper schema. Depending on your application, use case, and data structure, several different cache strategies are likely available to you. You can even create a custom strategy to fit your needs. In the write-through strategy, the cache server sits between the requests and the database server, making every write operation go through the cache server before going to the database server. Thus, the write-through caching strategy is similar to the read-through strategy. You can implement this strategy with the Laravel cache with the following code. This strategy is a more advanced way of implementing the write-through strategy by adding writing operations delays. You can also call this the write-behind strategy because of the delay in time applied to the cache server before writing the data to the database server. You can implement this strategy with the Laravel cache with the following code. The write back method calls to the write through method, which stores the data to the cache server and a temporary array to be pushed later to the database server using the update database server method. You can set up a cron job to update the database server every five minutes. This strategy allows all the write operations to go directly to the database server without updating the cache server. Only during the read operations is the cache server updated. 
Assuming a user wants to create a new article, the article stores directly to the database server. When the user wants to read the article's content for the first time, the article is retrieved from the database server and updates the cache server for subsequent requests. You can implement this strategy with the Laravel cache with the following code. The database is sitting aside in this strategy, and the application requests data from the cache server first. Then, if there's a hit, the data is returned to the client. Otherwise, if there's a miss, the database server requests the data and updates the cache server for subsequent requests. You can implement this strategy with the Laravel cache with the following code. This code shows the implementation of the cache aside strategy, which is equivalent to implementing the cache remember method. This strategy is the direct opposite of the cache aside strategy. In this strategy, the cache server sits between the client request and the database server. Requests go directly to the cache server, and the cache server is responsible for retrieving the data from the database server if not found in the cache server. You can implement this strategy with the Laravel cache with the following code. Well, there you have it. We've now discussed a few popular caching strategies for your next Laravel application. Remember, you can even use a custom caching strategy that best suits your project requirements. Caching the UI of our Laravel app is a concept known as Full Page Cache, FPC. The term refers to the process of caching the HTML response from an application. It's excellent for applications where the dynamic HTML data doesn't change frequently. You can cache the HTML response for a faster overall response and rendering of the HTML. We can implement FPC with the following line of code. At first glance, you might have noticed that we check if that article's index page already exists in our cache server. Then we return the page by rendering it with Laravel's view and render methods. Otherwise, we render the page and store the output in our cache server for subsequent requests before returning the rendered page to the browser. Now we're going to apply what we've learned so far by creating a new Laravel project and implementing Laravel cache. If you haven't used Laravel, you can read through what Laravel is and peek at our list of excellent Laravel tutorials to get started. First, we're going to create a fresh Laravel instance using this command. Open your console and navigate to where you store your PHP projects before running these commands. Make sure to have Composer installed and configured correctly. Next, we will set up our database create a new article model, and send 500 fake data points for testing. Open your database client and create a new database. We'll do the same with the name FastBlogAppDB, and then fill in your ENV file with the database credentials. Next, we'll run the following command to create the migration and the article model simultaneously. Open the newly created migration and paste in the following code. Next, run this command to create a new seeder. Open the newly created seeder file found here and paste it in the following code. Open the database seeder.php file in the same directory and add the following code. Next, run this command to create a new factory. Open the newly built factory file found here and paste it in the following code. Now run this command to migrate our newly created schema and also seed our fake data for testing. Next, we'll create our controller and set up our routes to handle our requests and retrieve data. Run the following command to create a new articles controller. Open the file and add the following code to the class. After that, open the api.php file found inside the routes folder and insert the following code to create an endpoint we can call to retrieve our data. Lastly, we will test the performance of our app's response with or without the implementation of the Laravel cache. This screenshot shows the responsive time of the API with cache implemented. The following screenshot shows the response time of the API without cache implemented. Note that the response time has increased over the cached instance by over 5,000%. If you still have questions about Laravel caching, please let us know in the comments section below. 
Kinsta's WordPress hosting can speed up your website by up to 200%. And you'll get 24 seven support from our WordPress expert engineers. Let us show you the Kinsta difference. Try a free demo of our My Kinsta dashboard at demo.kinsta.com. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.